Hello, it's me, Massey, for LFC Transfer Room. Back again with another predicted 11 for Liverpool. But this time, we are facing Bournemouth at Anfield this Saturday. So stay tuned for the video where I delve in who I think will be our start on 11. And is the game winnable on our return to Anfield? So... I think I've done all right at the predicted 11 for the Chelsea game. Because um, I did predict Alexis McAllister to be in the six. The only thing I did get wrong was um, Gakpo in the midfield. I did have him to start up top and Jones in that midfield role. Um, surprise, surprise. I'm probably going to stick to that on this one. But we'll delve into it. So first for me would be Alison Becker. Rumours this week that... Saudi Arabia won him. Um, the club laughed it off, rightfully so. He's the best goalkeeper in the world. I said this on last week's Predicted Eleven. By a country mile, no one comes close to him. He's so quick off his line. And in that first game against Chelsea, I'd argue him and Van Dijk kept us in that game. They were both absolutely fantastic. Van Dijk seemed to be returning to some of his old levels, to be fair. But Alison Becker keeps us in games. He kept us in the whole season last year, to be fair. Kept us fighting for European spaces. So he's the first name on the team. She's said this in the last video and it sticks on this one. He is the first name on the team. She's, he's going nowhere. He's staying in Liverpool and he's number one for us. And then right back, I'm going to stick with Trent. I don't think you'd put anyone else in there. Um, I do think Connor Bradley will get minutes this season, but I think it'll be more in the cup games in the Europa League. That's where Trent will get his rest because Jürgen knows how important it is to get top five. Say top five because it does look like with the UEFA coefficients it'll be top five who gets the Champions League. But I do think Trent is more important for the Premier League this year than any other competition. So whether it be Bournemouth or whether it be Manchester City, I think Trent starts every Premier League game for Liverpool this year. So no change there. I'm just a little bit worried that... If we aren't more defensive, he is going to get exposed again because we did see that against Chelsea, the space that was there. It did seem to be tightened up a bit and it was the left that got targeted against Chelsea. So we'll delve into that in a sec. But yeah, I mean, back to, I think it's got to be Ibu and Van Dijk. I think that's the best centre-back pairing in the league and I really do mean that. Um, as much as I love Matip, I think Ibu's just got that pace which we need at the minute, especially Lachan a defensive midfielder. I think he does help cover Trent. For me, he's one of the hottest prospects of a centre-half in world football, Ibu. He's just phenomenal. Since he's come into Liverpool, I, I couldn't really fault the lad. He's been fantastic. And I think he, him and Van Dijk, Trent and Alisson are some of the first names on the team sheet. And if they're fit and available, they start. And I think the only way Ibu doesn't start every game in the league this year is if he picks up a knock. But I think we can all praise the heavens we don't pick up any knocks because our squad is already thin. Moving on to left-back. <laughs> I'd start Costas Simicas. Um, not an against Andy Robbo. I just think he was so massively exposed in that left-back position against Chelsea because it's pretty much a left centre-back when we go forward. Now, me thinking behind there is Costas Simicas. He's not better than Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson is twice the player Costas is. However, I do feel like Costas will be a little bit more disciplined because in his head, he's like, well, if I do this new role better than Andy Robbo, I've maybe got a better chance of getting into the side. So he's going to be more disciplined where I do feel like sometimes Robbo was still creeping forward when he should have been back because Trent was so f high up and we were getting exposed on that left-hand side really quite a lot. There was quite a few times where Robbo was completely out of position and... I personally am not with the majority on Twitter saying, oh, we should sell him, he's declining. I think Andy Robertson's a massive asset for Liverpool and we should still keep him because it allows us, if we do bring in a left-sided centre-back, to play the new system, but it also allows us to go back to the old system. Say Trent picks up a knock and we're playing Conor Bradley, he doesn't want, know the inverted role that well. We go back into our normal system and then Andy Robbo's then bombing forward. I think he's good to keep around. He... Definitely, definitely, definitely is massive in addressing. I mean, we've seen that in all the inside trainings in pre-season. But I think Bournemouth is a game where you could maybe give Robbo a rest. Because if we don't bring a left-sided centre-back in, you're going to need Robbo in Europa League games and stuff because the cover behind him isn't great. But I feel like in a game against Bournemouth is where you should be playing people like Costas to give Robbo the rest and see if Costas can impress in this new system. So that's one change I would say for the Bournemouth game. If we were playing someone... 
like a City or a United, I'd be saying Andy Robbo, but purely because we are playing ultimately a game where you'd say Liverpool should win this, I feel like playing Costas is a good option just to see how he does because Robbo has been struggling massively in that new system. Going on to the midfield, where do we start? It's just been a disappointing week, hasn't it, for Liverpool? Like, I, to be honest, when Casado got announced that we'd agree the deal, I, for one, didn't think it was possible still because he, Chelsea had been working on him for months. I didn't think we could hijack it. And then by doing that, we've really round, wound up Todd Bowley and he's went and took Lavia as well. But I do feel like the way we handled it was poor from Liverpool and I don't like that our dealings are so public this year. Um, we've so publicly said how much we want Lavia to then go for Casado at the last minute, which makes Lavia feel like, oh, well, I'm your second choice. You didn't really want me. You played me. And that's exactly what he felt. And he's gone to Chelsea. And I don't think we can blame Lavia. I think Casado is mad to want to go to Chelsea over Liverpool. But I suppose people have different motives to lifelong Liverpool fans. But it was just mad that Lavia has done it as well. But I don't blame the kid. So going into the Bournemouth game, we're still left in the predicament we spoke about for the predicted 11 for Chelsea, that we, we haven't got no recognised defensive midfielder. One positive is Thiago's been sore in training today at the time of recording. It's Wednesday today. So at the time of recording, Thiago's been in training, providing he doesn't pick up a knock between now and Saturday that I think he maybe might start. But I think in that defensive midfielder role, we're going to have to play Alexis there again. And it really winds me up because he's so good going forward. He's so creative He's so creative in that eighth Alexis that playing him in, in the six is a bit wasted for me, to be honest with you. So he's going to have to play there. He's the best option we've got in that position, really, against Bournemouth because we still haven't brought anyone in. I do think we maybe might have brought someone in by the time the game comes around on Saturday. But they're not going to start, are they? Given they'd have a day maximum training, day two days, something like that. I can't see someone starting. So I think it'll be Alexis in the six and Sovislai on the right side of the midfield, who may I add, unbelievable. I'm so excited by him from his performance against Chelsea. As soon as Alexis and Dom have got that six behind them and give them a bit of stability, they're going to excel. And I've got no worries about Liverpool this season. It's not all doom and gloom like people make out on the cesspit that is Twitter. Get a six in and them two midfielders are going to absolutely shine. They're going to be unbelievable for us and I'm excited. So... Them two are definitely starting. And I do think in the left side of the midfield role, I'd like to see Thiago play because I feel like Alexis can creep forward and Thiago can drop back in game if needed. And Thiago can do a better job in the six than that of what Curtis Jones could. But then you've got the catch 22 of Jones didn't do nothing wrong when he came on against Chelsea. I think he, he calmed it down a little bit. But then you've got Harvey Elliott who came on and made an absolute unbelievable performance didn't do himself no harm at all was definitely the shining light when he came on he, he just changed the game for Liverpool we were getting hammered and it seemed like he started to add a bit of creativity which I feel like he'd be a good ac option to start as well but Elliot is better in the right side of the midfield but then Sovereslai can play on the left side we've seen that for Leipzig so it's hard really picking a midfield free for Bournemouth because I do feel like you should be playing Elliot or Jones, but then if Thiago's fit, I did mention he should be a luxury midfielder, but at the minute he can't be because we've got no midfielders. So I'm going to just go on a knife edge and say Alexis McAllister in the six, Sovereslai on the left side of midfield and Harvey Elliott on the right side of midfield. I feel like he deserves to start and you've got to show players if you come on and make a difference off the bench, you will get that game time because he did come on and he did make a difference and he does deserve that start. So for me, it's going to be Alexis, Dom, and Elliot. And then it goes on to the front three, which again, not much changes really. I probably won't start Jota to, if it was my decision. I'm one in the camp of, I love Jota. I think he's one of the best signings. We've had value for money in years. Um, but I feel like he's better off the bench. I feel like when he's on the bench, he reads the game better. And when he comes on like the 60th minute, He's more deadly, he's more lively, he gets at defences more. I don't know what it is, but every time Jota starts, he doesn't impress me nowhere near as much as when he comes off the bench. So I'd keep Jota on the bench because I feel like having that option to come on and just run at defences and twist them inside out is fantastic for Liverpool. 
I'd start Diaz on the left. I think you've got to start him. Unbelievable against Chelsea, in my opinion, one of the best left wingers in the world. I think he's unbelievable. A sign who literally gets you on the edge of your seat. Um, right wing's going to be Salah. I think that, that picks itself. Um, although I wouldn't be against giving Ben Dowell a little start, to be honest with you. Just to show Salah, like, you can't walk off the pitch and start ripping things and storm past Klopp. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you wanted your opening day goal, but you've done nothing in the second half, mate, so give the kid a chance. You know, that was just, I was a bit annoyed at that. I wouldn't be against seeing Ben Dowell start because I feel like I get a team against, like, Bournemouth, he, he can run at their defence more than he could against a side like Chelsea. And I feel like that's where he'd, he'd really come out of his shell as well. But I do think it'll be Diaz, Salah, and down the middle, I'm going to go for Nunes. I, I know he came on and he wasn't phenomenal against Chelsea until his bun fell out and he had a ponytail and he played much better. So as long as he comes out with a ponytail. Um, but seriously, I feel like a game against Bournemouth, that's where you could maybe hope that Nunes can bag a goal or two. Going to do the kid loads of wonders in his confidence. And then when you then play him against the likes of Cities and stuff, he's already bagged a few goals against the lower sides in the league. He's got that confidence to, to then put it into the bigger game. So I'd start Nunes um, purely because having the options of Gakpo and Jota off the benches is, is mouth-watering really. And I feel like games against Bournemouth, Gakpo already knows he's probably ahead of Nunes, but for Nunes to play them games, A, he's going to get a bit of confidence like, right, I'm starting this week. Then he'll, if he scores, it's like, okay, I've started and I've scored. So the next time I'm, re I'm relied upon, I've got that confidence, I'll come on and make a difference. So I feel like it'd be smart to start Nunes. And that's me 11. So to run that 11 from the top, I'm going to have Allison, Trent right back, Canate right centre back, Virgil left centre back, Simakas left back, Alexis McAllister on the six. So obviously left centre mid, Harvey Elliott. Right centre mid, Salah right wing, Luis Diaz left wing, and Darwin Nunes up front. Hopefully we get three points. To be fair, not that this point with the draw against Chelsea anyway. We don't have a six. I think we were very lucky to come away from that game with a point. Saturday's a game we should be winning. Back at Anfield. Not a full Anfield though. Uh, Anfield Road's still not open, which is unfortunate. But it just means that the rest of the stands need to make as much noise to re replicate a stand missing really. I for one can't wait to be back on them terraces on Saturday. It's been a long summer without it. So up the reds, I'm going to predict the 4 0 win on Saturday and Darwin Nunes is going to bag two. That's how confident I am in him. <laughs> but yeah, don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe on the video. We do stream every single day at 7.30. I've also heard a few whispers as a little exclusive for you of some more American time streams for any of our US listeners as well. We're going to be having two streams a day potentially coming Got all of our post-match, pre-match, watch-along content as well this season. There's loads up in LFC Transfer Room on our mission to become one of the best fan channels for this football club. So leave a like and subscribe. Helps us out loads. I've been Matty. I'll see you next week for the next Predicted 11.